So, um, uh, I am a, I'm a US citizen, but I happen to be born and raised in Iceland. And I didn't find out that I was a US citizen until I was 36 years old. So, we, we kind of packed up our things and, and moved to the States five years ago. And, um, well, it's going to be five years now in, in July. Um, I have a master's degree in uh, international business and uh, my focus has been on marketing and sales and that's kind of what I've been doing all over the whole time, thank you. The, uh, I've kind of been in for profit mainly, and, uh, but I was very fortunate when I moved to Austin, Texas. Um, I had been there for a while where I, when I was introduced to um, Volachi, they, they are a marketing company. They do, uh, see, would, at the time, they did uh, SEO for um, Drupal sites. So uh, that's how I got to know Drupal. My first connection with the community, I, I attended um, Atlanta Drupal Camp, and I was just amazed. Uh, I couldn't believe that people came together and shared information like they did in the, in the community. So, so, um, then I went to Bad Camp in, at Berkeley, and I was like, oh my god, does this really exist? So I worked for the company for a year, and then that opportunity was no longer available for me. So uh, there were a few weeks that passed by, and then Megan Sanity, she is the Associate Director of the Drupal Association, she was looking for an account manager. I had educated myself in marketing, and I was going to be a marketing director for a company. That was my big dream, but I was like, no, I want this. So. I raised my hand, and uh, a few weeks later, I was flying over to Sedona, Arizona for training. And I think that's the best thing that has ever happened to me. Well, not my, not my family, I have to say. But, um, so, um, Drupal is just, uh, the community is the reason. I didn't come for the platform, because I have no IT background, not, not whatsoever. But I really came for the community. I'm just amazed, and I'm so thankful for being a part of it. So now, I've been here for, uh, I've been uh, connected to the community since 2012, and I've been with the association since, uh, for, well, for a year and a half. And I, like I said, you're the best crowd to work with. That's good to hear. Oh, there's one thing I want to also add. Yep. Because uh, it kind of asked if I had anything. Quick. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I, had, I went circles with that, with that, but I didn't have any. But there's one thing. I find myself in a position today where I never ever thought I would be. Um, I have I have two I have three children. So I have a son who's 12 years old, and he really loves everything. He loves Minecraft like all kids do. And I heard about uh, a community member, Matt Young. He's down in San Diego that he was doing uh, like coding training for kids and using Minecraft to do it. And I, I hunted him down, and I was like, please do this online, because I was, I'm in Austin, Texas, I can do it. And um, a year after our conversation, he's like, no, Johanna, at, that, the time, at the time, he said, no, Johanna, you do it in Austin. I was like, I can't do it. But today, we have a group of uh, uh, young men who are learning to code. They, they build a robot, they do Minecraft, and, and, and the best thing is, I have two team members from the community that are helping me. That's Robert Ristoff, he's with Acquia. And then uh, Mike <coughs> Mineki, he is with the Four Kitchen. So I have really two very high-skilled developers. And that he, they, we, sh we meet twice, you know, once a month. And, uh, and they come and they just give back. And they give back to the next generation. And, and it's amazing to be a part of it. So that's one of the things that not just work-related, but what, how that has affected my life. So. That's awesome. Yeah, we've got something here called Code Club, and I think Paul from CTI is quite heavily involved with that. Yeah. Yeah, but that's great to hear. So, so uh, and we're hoping that we can get that um, kind of formed and put together in some way, so it doesn't matter where you're located, you can just pick up the, it's going to be an open source program. So anybody who has the talent can pick it up and run with it. So. In their own city. So. Cool. So I've got a question. Yeah. DA has yeah. been growing a little bit, just a little. Uh huh. Uh, tell us a bit about that and why, what's happening. Well, um, 
when I joined the Dubois Association uh, 18 months ago, I think we were nine or 10 at the time. Today we are 30, and we might hire one to three more individuals. Um, we've heard, I've heard voices when I, I travel, I go to a lot of camps, and I've heard voices that we're growing for growth's sake, but that's not the case. Um, we have, uh, when I joined, we had two, te two people that helped, they were on the tech side, only two, and they were even contractors. Uh, so it was in 2013 when the community, no, when the board decided that there was a real tech deficit, uh, and it was on our end. So we put some money into hiring a tech team, and today we have 11 and a half positions that solely focus on Drupal.org and other sites that are related to our operation, <coughs> and that and our goal is, of course, to strengthen the community and, come, and bring us together. Uh, and number one, uh, Drupal.org. That's where we're putting our efforts today. And so, so that's why we've grown. I, we've added a few people to other departments, but that the main growth has been in the, in the tech. And uh, uh, my computer kind of didn't allow me to connect, but I do have, and I, I have my, so I've got my card here. If you want to get uh, information about what I talk about here today, I can just shoot you an email with all the links related. So, and we do have on the site, on Drupal.org, we do have uh, a roadmap, and that is what the tech team is working towards. And uh, I know they've even checked a number of things off that list, so it kind of needs an update. But it kind of shows you where they're heading with that, with that product, with that program, yeah. So talk about Drupal.org, there's organization profiles on there. Yes. Okay, so I, I want to check, I want to have, uh, how many of you do have, uh, have your own companies or are managers within a company? Can you raise your hands, please? Do you know if your company has an organization profile on Drupal.org? Raise your hands. Do you know if it's up to date? Oh. <laughs> we keep going down. <laughs> See, that's the case. So, um, the reason why we are going into, the reason why we hired the tech team, the reason why we're focusing on Google.org uh, is because we want to support the community and we want to provide a better business environment for you with your company so you don't have to create all your marketing material from scratch or you want to create, uh, that you have to do the, the pitch from beginning to end. So one of our main main goals is to improve the content on Drupal.org. So when you are presenting Drupal as a solution, you can pull the, the relevant content, content from the site. So all the marketing elements are being kind of streamlined and fixed on the site. But we're just giving them the platform. We have this amazing community and all these companies that are that represent Drupal, and uh, I think for it would be great if, if each and every one of you that is responsible could go and see if you have a profile. If you don't, then set it up. It is free. Make sure you allow, um, contact your 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 team and ask them to list your company as their place of work. That's how you can really show. It's like your Drupal resume. And if you want to take it even a step further, um, we have a case study option on Drupal.org. And it would be great if you have experiences or, or stories to tell that you post that on Drupal.org and then just make sure you link that with your own profile. That's your resume. And uh, uh, now that we have Drupal 8 coming up, Okay, yeah, what we have coming up. We are we have a marketing campaign in the works for Drupal 8. And as soon as we say, okay, we're ready, then the DA is gonna do is gonna push play on the first Drupal marketing campaign ever. It has never been done. Everything that has what well, we have done, except you know Acqua has done an amazing job of leading that marketing initiative. And we wouldn't be there's a lot of a lot of um, things that would not have taken place unless they did that. But we feel the association should be uh, more involved in that. And I think Akri is also thankful that we will <coughs> jump on board and, and get that going. 
and we're ready and we're doing that now. But we kind of need your help because you have the stories, you have the experience within the community, and we need that on the site. And uh, please let me know if you, I can send you an email with everything of how to get things going very quickly and I would just love to share that with you. Because that's going to make it easier for us to present the, and promote the platform. So, um, tell us about like, what you feel the differences are between DrupalCon in the US and DrupalCon okay. in Europe. Mm -hmm. Okay, so how many of you have gone to DrupalCon overall? Uh, in Europe, in the States. Okay, so um, now that I've been in the community since 2012, I kind of, I don't know, I don't know at all, but I kind of have a feeling, and after uh, attending two uh, European conferences and three, sorry, two North America conferences, um, I, um, there is a big difference between the two, the kind of the, the attendee group. Uh, the one that's here in Europe is much more developer uh, oriented and we don't have as many, we do have end users, we don't have as bigger uh, group that would, uh, the group isn't as big when it comes to kind of C-level or CMS evaluators, which we are seeing more of uh, in the North America event. So, um, and also another thing uh, which I've, I've experienced is that um, we have more end users over in the states that have teams of developers, whereas there might be one or two people at companies here in Europe, and then they have a shop in Europe. So it's just kind of a different set of things. So because of that, there was a uh, kind of a request that the community would know that the association would make an effort, an extra poll here in Europe, and we're doing that. Uh, I'm, you're kind of the first one to know about this because, well, we have a little pack. We have, um, I don't want to push back before I can tell you what's going on, uh, that uh, we have a program called Supporting Partner Program, and there are at least a few supporting partners in here. Four. And uh, they got an email late, uh, like last night, London time, about the program because they always have to hear about it first, what's going on. That's kind of the pack. They kind of help us and they get to peek into the package before we open it up. But um, this year, we are going to do co-marketing events with companies, one in the UK and one in Germany. Co-marketing event is, this is a digital event, international events, and we've picked them. Uh, they are called uh, Mexico and the, in the one in Germany, and see my slides, it would have been great to have them now. <laughs> but it is, it is an a, a excellent, excellent uh, choice because we had a lot to pick from here in the UK. So we have two events, and we are going to partner up with five companies for each event. It's first come, first serve, and uh, promote Drupal. So the Drupal Association is going to buy a booth, we're going to set everything up, and the company has the opportunity to walk in, be a part of the Drupal booth, uh, but there are only five of them. Again, if you want to hear about that more, I'm going to be here around all day. And there's of course the cost uh, associated with it, but it's way lower than ever if you would decide to do that on your own. And the, and the reason why we're doing this is because we don't have as many CMS evaluators or kind of end users attending DrupalCon in Europe. So uh, we want to uh, get that going a little bit more in, here in Europe. We're not going to do this in the States, at least not. Not for now. We have a really good thing going on. So, so, so this is extra for Europe. We've also heard that we do more for North America, or more for America. Or we're also focusing on you guys. We're making sure that we help you move, uh, move things forward on this end. Yeah, so apart from about five people where this room is the first to know about this, mm -hmm. 
Yes. Okay, so well, no, we, exclusive. Yeah, yeah, we sent it out to supporting partners, okay. and uh, uh, it's going to be more uh, relevant to the European supporting partners. And so we're talking about maybe max 15 companies knew about it. 15 to 20 companies knew about it before. Hi. Um, what, what do you think has caused the, the difference in the, the audience between the North America and Europe? I am not sure. Um, <coughs> Coming from Europe and from a small country, I see the real benefits of, of what's going on in the States. There is one language, there is one currency, there is one business environment, despite the fact they are in different states. Here in Europe, we have uh, many different cultures. We have different regulations and rules within company, you know, within countries, what is allowed and what's not allowed. So even though, despite the fact that it is the European Union, there are barriers in some areas, right? right. Yes. Well so, so uh, it's 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 going to take a little longer, but uh, I also know that there is more uh, adoption of, of Drupal within government and, and in higher education here in Europe. But they don't walk into if you have provided a solution in Germany, that does not mean that you can walk in with that solution in another country, which is what they can do in the states. So, just one thing to add, if you look at DrupalCon, how they were five years ago in the US, they were the same as yes. they are now in Europe. So I, I didn't want to, it's kind of good, but I didn't want to say it. It's like Europe is a, like three, we, we kind of say three years behind uh, when it comes to DrupalCon, but, but it is evolving. So, but in the meantime, this is what we can do to kind of accelerate the process. Do you think that's the plan for the European troop parts to follow the more commercial route the, that is basically uh, the US? Well, I wouldn't say uh, this is just a tradition. <coughs> so we're not changing people con. We will keep we will stick to well, at least as far as I know. Things move kind of fast at yeah. the association. Despite the fact we're thirty now, we kind of we try to move fast for the community. But um, the model for DrupalCon, it is the education, it's the gathering where we share knowledge and um, with time um, we're expecting the, the European market to catch up with the North American market on how the attendees are. But that's kind of that's what we're heading for. Yeah, but, part of the know, higher level goal yeah. to find it. Yes. Higher, yeah. Yeah, yes. Higher, yes. Higher. Yes. Well, and that's the thing, and, and one of the, the vital parts that the tech team is focusing on is to improve the content on Drupal.org when it comes to training. And uh, our new CTO, Joshua Mitchell, he's doing an amazing job overseeing that, because it's not like that you can just sign up at a university and walk out as a full-fledged Drupal developer. That's not the case. This is the individual drive to get through the process of becoming an excellent developer in the field and uh, there was there were gaps and there are some gaps on Drupal.org to help a person go down that road so um, we're improving that and that's one of the one of the benefits that come from uh, the, what the work the work that the tech team is working on. So the last question for me but then we can open up to the audience is you mentioned that you want to look for end users to be more involved in yes. the community, right? Well, and yes, we are, and we've got, uh, I don't know, have, have you heard about the Drupal 8 Accelerate program? I don't know. It doesn't know. That's a no. <laughs> okay, good. Yes. <laughs> There's a, that's good to know. So we have... Um, uh, we have uh, an amazing board of, di board of directors, and they have a task now in 2015. They are for the first time going to uh, be a part of raising some funds for the association. And uh, the, the so Drupal 8 Accelerate is a is a pool of money that we because. The association never touches core. We just don't. We can't. But 
we can maybe collect money to facilitate people to come together to help us move it along. And that's what's happening now. Uh, Drupal 8 and Accelerate, uh, we have the board members reaching out to companies within the community and to end users to help that, help that, well, ask them to help us help them to get this going. So, uh, Drupal 8 Accelerate, uh, it's not, it's, it's the board that's working on it, but that's one of the things. But when it comes to end users, uh, and we've noticed that uh, probably a little bit more over in, in the States than in here, that we have really, we have companies that have really embraced Drupal, they have their Drupal teams, and, uh, and they want to give back. Today we run programs at the at the association. We of course have DrupalCon, which fund helps us fund the, the events themselves. We have a supporting partner program, which helps fund the tech team. And then we have uh, hosting supporters, which are the hosting companies that want to plug in and, and provide you the solution. And then we have the tech supporters, which are the third, uh, which are the yeah all the tech solutions that want to have the module built or build the module uh, with uh, and connect with Drupal. Uh, but we don't have any programs today that tailor the needs of end users. Except we've set up Drupal Jobs, which has been something that I've been very excited about. So we feel that that's something we would like to add and get on the map that we'll have, because um, if you look at attendee lists that come to like DrupalCon in, in North America, there are universities that have, I don't know, 10, 15, 20 Drupal developers on their team. We are very big departments. And we have companies like uh, large identities that have <coughs> large teams, but we don't have any programs. So that's something that we are kind of looking into if we can provide them with like a supporting partner program so they can help us. Move the, move the project along. Um, so where are like the specific places? How would we find out more of the Are there any specific things we can do? Yes. How you can help? I would love it if I can give you my <coughs> card and if you send me an email, I'll send you all the links that I went over. Just to make sure that specifically um, make sure you add your content on the site. On Drupal, make sure your organization profile is up to date. Make sure you, if you have a story to tell, if you have a good case study, uh, place that on on the. Um, it's a form you need. To, it's not a two-page fancy marketing uh, piece of paper. Uh -uh. It is a form you fill out. It's very very tech oriented, and 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 uh, for a person that went through and built that or worked on that solution, uh, it's pretty easy to. Set up, so. but, but rules for us, because a lot of those uh, posts are already on the blog. Um, is, it, uh, is it allowed to do cross posting, or are you have a person on your own blog and then also put it on? Oh, for the case studies? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, case studies are just a collection of, of, solu of, of solutions or projects that, and, and uh, we, part of our marketing initiative, we've been building uh, landing pages uh, around different solutions. Okay. So for like for nonprofits, for higher education, and and then we link into and we have case studies kind of uh, associated with that. So your content helps us build our marketing campaign. Yes. Case studies on the um, current profiles. Is that end users as well as developers? Yes. 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 And and there's another thing that uh, I don't know if you heard about the kind of a, I forgot to make note about that. Um, when, what Dries talked about in Amsterdam, that we can, now we can, well, we have, we're an open source community. It, it's the individual contribution that, that's what it's all about. But, and as, as C-level people, managers, you know you have had Drupal developers on your team that have worked on a project and there was a solution and you gave it back and it was listed on, on the individual not on the, uh, and the company was never mentioned. But it was a combination of the individual and, so, and, the, and the company that paid their salary. So, uh, now you can list uh, the company as a co-contributor, or even the end user as a co-contributor. But, uh, and 
now that 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 has been put in place uh, if you have something like that connected to uh, any of your developers it's totally up to you but i would recommend you should email them and say hey guys make sure to to list us as the co-contributor so if, if that developer leaves your operation your contribution will still be related the contribution will still be related to your organization profile so it will be connected to your company which is a, a, an addition to what has been possible in the past. Oh, yes, <laughs> oh, yeah, this board of directors you keep mentioning, is there any way of like, voting these people in or are there any elections or anything? <laughs> <laughs> we are coming up to elections. <laughs> that is so true. Um, yeah, uh, I believe that it was 10 days now, 9 days until elections. Yeah, I think voting starts on the 5th of March. Yes, nice. yeah. So, so, so we are going to see some changes. Uh, I have to admit, I did not look into the process and not the voting, but I would of course say please look and uh, make sure you participate in, in that way by helping us select the right people to help lead the association. We've got time for like one or two more questions. Anything else? Any questions about like how, even more about how the DA can help your organization for you as an individual? Yes. You mentioned Drupal Jobs earlier. Uh -huh. We tried to use recently. Mm -hmm. Didn't go for normal success, unfortunately. Um, are you thinking of like, sticking Jobs straight onto Drupal.org itself? I know it's a separate website at the moment. That likely to be on the site at some point in the future. So, um, I can tell you they are looking into ways of, of, of maximizing the, the eyes that see the, the, the opportunities that are out there. I'm not quite sure if it's uh, going to be connected to Google.org. We are very uh, aware of that that is the community site, even though we kind of manage it today, but we don't do anything except the community really is on board with it. So. Uh, can't say yes or no, but, but it's a good, uh, I'll ask around, uh, but we are, um, it's one of the, one of the steps to become more professional, to be more visible that we, uh, it, kind of to the outward facing world that if I, if I decide that I'm going to spend a few years to become a people developer, what's out there for me? And one of the one of the things that's missing is really an overview of the opportunities or the community and, and what you might be facing. But I'm sorry to hear that you didn't find the right person. Yeah, I, I don't know if it's because we're small US centric at the moment, I'm not sure, but we just have people from abroad applying, no one in the UK at all, unfortunately. Okay. Or maybe you could see eyes, as you say, but not seeing it enough. Yeah. I'm not sure. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll ask around. Yeah. And, and I'll, if you. Give me a contact information, I'll get you an answer. One last question. Any more? Okay. Yes. I've got a question around the um, visibility of the organisations for uh -huh. contributions. Mm -hmm. um, how does that actually, what's the process, how does that work? So if I'm, if I'm hiring someone and they put in their contributions on it or there's more than, more than just the code, so it's the documentation updates. Helping. Could you tell us just a little bit about the different ways that that's done, and where where those contributions are acknowledged? Are they on your profile page, is it that, or are they elsewhere? If they if it doesn't go through Drupal.org, it's kind of difficult for us to to over, to kind of list. But that doesn't mean that you can't list it. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, when you set up an organization profile, there is a category called contribution. And there are three types you can you can add on uh, what it is that the company has, has contributed. Right? So, and, there, uh, and as you probably know, when you search on Drupal Develop, there's just so many things. We have a we have a site that a community built for many 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 years, and there was uh, no structure of where we're going or what we're doing. Just need to fix this and that, and we grew really fast. So. Joshua Mitchell has a really uh, decent project to work on, and he's doing an excellent job. But that's one of the things um, we're, we 
you can't. But except if you make sure that you get that information on there. So it's the code contributions. Do you, do you see those individuals? Yeah. There's, well, there's, what's it, there's, there's a structure in, in how you should be using this. Yes. And, and you can add um, like you can attributes whose who's basically support the, the work that you've done. Uh, but if, uh, I'm mm -hmm. sure there's a lot more stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a how to. Yes. Yeah. Okay, and, and again, give me a contact information. I'll get you the information. Okay, thank you. So, Joanna's come all the way from America via Iceland, so I think we should say thank you to her. <laughs> <laughs>